public hearing for the Cave Creek Unified School District's virtual instruction time model for the 2023-24 school year. Uh, item 1.2, public comments. Are there any public comments? All right. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. We are adjourned. All right. <clears throat> now. I call to order this uh, business meeting for the Cave Creek Unified School District. It is Tuesday, August 8th, and it is 6 o'clock. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All members of the board, item 2.3, roll call. All members of the board are present and members of the cabinet, Mrs. Rodriguez, Rodriguez Dr. Hendrickson and Dr. Jensen are present. Um, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. A second? Second. Any changes, modifications? Okay. All in favor of the agenda as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we got our agenda. All right, President's report, item 2.5. Well, I had the um, pleasure to attend the new teacher orientation, and we have about 40 new, very enthusiastic, energetic teachers, and they've come from different parts of the country. We have some from Illinois. Some of them bring some really great experience. And we have three Cave Creek alumni teachers. So welcome back to those teachers. Um, I also attended the teacher kickoff. Is that the correct name? Teacher kickoff. And uh, Mr. Dolezal had Jason Schnechterly, who was the police officer that was involved in a car crash that was severely burned. He was the keynote speaker and it was very um, uplifting and it was an awesome way to kick off the school year. And uh, that's about all I've done in the last two weeks. So any of the board members have comments? I just wanted to say that like you, I did you get to uh, attend the new teacher training and it was really good to see so many new teachers coming up here to Cave Creek uh, hopefully they will stay here for a nice long time so it's good to have them all here I also attended the new teacher orientation it was good to see all the energy and training that they were getting that week so that was neat to be a part of and then successfully got my children to school this week so winning <laughs> I also attended the kickoff and heard Jason, the uh, former Phoenix PD, that was quite inspiring. I don't know that there was a dry eye in the room and everybody was spellbound. It was great to see all the teachers and, and experience our new superintendent do a great job kicking all of that off and raising the level of enthusiasm. That was really fun. And um, also met with an are preparing for our board retreat on August 22nd. So I encourage everybody to attend that. I think it'll be really enlightening. Good to see the goals that we're going to work on setting as a district and as a board, and it'll be fun to see all that come together. So would love participation. Okay, 2.7, superintendent's report. Good evening and thank you, President Busby, members of the board. Uh, as is already mentioned on July 31st, CCUSD welcomed back all the teaching staff for the school year. We had a district-wide staff meeting for the first time since before COVID uh, with Jason Schechterly as our keynote speaker at the Fine Arts Center. Uh, thank you for those who could make it. Uh, staff has been stopping us uh, on trips to schools and we've been getting emails just how much they appreciated the welcome back and shared their takeaways from Mr. Schechterly's presentation. Uh, and the staff spent the rest of last week learning and preparing for students to come. Hot off the press, as I just received it today, 
congratulations goes out to Mrs. Marcy Rodriguez, CCUSD CFO, and the business services team. They are the recipients of the Government Financial Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. This is the highest form of recognition in governmental accounting and financial reporting and represents a significant accomplish by Mrs. accomplishment by Mrs. Rodriguez and her team. Uh, another congratulations goes out to CCUSD and STMS's very own Miss Ashley Faust. She was awarded Best Overall Poster and Presentation at the Research and Engineering Symposium this July at Rice University in Houston. Uh, she was awarded that for her work on the transfer of carbon dioxide to organics using biofilm and gold nanoparticles. Oh, okay. <laughs> and she's an incredible eighth grade science teacher. <laughs> uh, if you have not hand, had a chance to view it yet, I would like to quickly show you the CCUSD Welcome Back video created by our own Allison Mazog, our amazing digital communications specialist. I just thought that was really cool and, and wanted to make sure you guys had seen that. It's been out on our social media channels. but uh, And then most importantly, beyond anything else, yesterday was the first day for school for the 23-24 school year. It was absolutely fabulous getting around and seeing the students back on campus. They bring our buildings to life, and it's so much better with them in there. Uh, Dr. Jensen, Dr. Hedrickson, Mrs. Rodriguez, and I visited all seven schools. We went into all the classrooms. Uh, we handed out welcome back postcards to the teachers and staff, a copy of which is sitting at your place on the dais tonight. And we are just looking so forward to a great school year, doing great things for students. And that concludes my superintendent's report. Thank you. Um, item 3.1, call to the public. We have one individual, Garrett Burns. Um, I can see everybody. Okay. Can see me over the I, I have an admonition. I have to read. According to ARS 38-431.01, governing board members may not discuss or take legal action on matters raised during an open call to the public. The only allowable responses a governing board member may make are one, a board member may respond if there is a direct criticism of the board member, two, the board member may direct staff to look into a matter, or three, a board member can ask to have this item placed on a future agenda. Speakers need to be mindful of what they say when presenting to the board. Inappropriate comments could be considered slanderous. You will have three minutes to speak. Please state your name at the microphone. Hello, my name is Garrett Burns, and I'm here to talk about the item on the agenda 7.4, and thank you, board, for letting me speak. Um, online charter school student participation in interscholastic athletics and activities. Oh, has to go even lower. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm here on behalf of those students that are online um, outside of the Academy of Excellence within district at other online schools. Um, my daughter, Lauren Burns, is a senior this year. She has attended uh, Cave Creek School or Cave Creek schools throughout kindergarten and up through this time. Uh, since COVID-19, uh, she has suffered from depression. Uh, she has started in classroom. Then she was, oh, well, 2019, she started online with everybody else uh, and then finished that year in classroom. Uh, her sophomore year, she started in classroom um, and 
later moved to the Academy of Excellence and eventually went into therapy, uh, inpatient therapy for her depression. Uh, she started again in classroom and uh, then transitioned to ASU Prep Digital as in speaking with her counselor, Academy of Excellence did not have the opportunity, she would not receive her graduation requirements going through Academy of Ex Excellence. She is a 4.0 and above student. Uh, she has played two years on the JV team. Last year she didn't try out due to her depression. This will be her senior year. She has played three years with the, uh, the local club academy, PRFC uh, Desert Elite and uh, she really wants to play her senior year with her friends. And so that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Item 4.1, the instructional time model presented by Dr. Jensen. Thank you, President Busby, members of the board. Um, as you can see here, we have the instructional time model. Uh, once again, we approved this last year. And go ahead and go to the next slide, Erica. Um, this addresses three different areas of our strategic plan, student success, employee excellence, and a safe environment and culture. You might argue it could also be part of our effective operations, as it does make sure that our students are in attendance on days that they typically did not attend, or a day that they often did not attend, which is our ACT day. Go ahead. Um, so in 2021, House Bill 2862 gave us some flexibility regarding how we count student attendance and in our instructional minutes. Um, based on this House Bill, we're able to uh, provide remote learning and still count students as 100% in attendance. To be clear, we don't really do have a hybrid model. Um, so it's not that students can come and go as they please or that they can do partial days so much as we have to designate exactly when and how we'll be using that um, instructional time model. And in this case, it's for um, CSHS attendance and ACT Aspire. Um, slash ACT dates this school year. We don't yet know the dates because those become released shortly. Um, and once we have those, then we communicate to parents. Freshmen, sophomores, and seniors do not come to school that day on the ACT day. The ACT Aspire day is different. Um, and instead, they have an assignment that they complete at home um, in, for each of their classes so that they attend the school remotely that day. So the required components of the plan include our instructional approach, which ours is remote or virtual learning, um, the times that students and teachers would be on the same schedule when needed, um, and tracking attendance. Attendance will be documented in power schools, um, as we always do, and it is based on completion of an assignment for that day. And with that, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Item 4.2, the 2023-24 Interim Superintendent Goals presented by Mr. Dolezal. President Busby, members of the board, purpose of this presentation is to present my goals for this year. Uh, again, with the belief that too many priorities actually means nothing is a priority, I've really limited the scope um, of the measurable goals as interim superintendent for this year, focusing around safety and achievement. And I've also added another goal under communication that is qualitative rather than quantitative. Um, so just to review these, number one for safety, um, our goal would be that CCUSD becomes an ALICE trained and certified district by the end of this year, fiscal year 24. And that would be measured by the percentage of total staff trained. Um, Another thing I've heard is that the board is interested in, in numbers and also setting bars very high. Um, so I looked at um, setting the bar high this year for our staff and, and for this training. So again, um, we're looking at 95, our goal is to get 95 plus percent of every single staff member across the district trained this year in ALICE, uh, which is a safety protocol um, for active shooters or even just um, violent events on campus. 
uh, that's one. And then following up on our uh, goals from the past, but really looking at how students feel and the importance of realizing what, um, how they feel and their safety being priority. Um, students in grades three through 12 will report that they feel safe on their campus as indicated by the student survey administered during the 23-24 school year. Um, again, we had yet to ever hit anything close to 90%, so that's setting the goal high there in terms of we're looking at 90%. I, I would love for 100%, um, but under safety, we've got 90% and then moving down as you can read those. Um, for achievement goals, um, went back and forth, and I might even share one um, that I was thinking about, but then realized it wouldn't really, we wouldn't get the data back in time, but broke this down into all of our different levels in testing. So CCUSD students in grades three through eight will exceed ASA scores in ELA and math. Um, so in th grades three through eight, we want to be at least 20% over the state average. Um, again, that's not, some grades have hit that, not many, but that's where we're shooting for uh, for this year. Same thing with grade nine and their ACT Aspire tests. Uh, we want them uh, at or above 20% of the state. And then uh, as far as grade 11, our ACT students, um, the state doesn't get percentages. It's measured a little bit differently. Uh, so again, our grade 11 students will exceed the state ACT scores in STEM, which is where they combine math and science, as well as English, which is English reading and writing. Um, and we will be greater than or equal to three points um, above the state average. Those are the concrete um, numerical goals. Uh, and then again, as part of my three safety achievement and then communication, um, this one is more qualitative. Uh, purposely, it's going to be something that you all will have to interpret from a feel, whether you get that feel from employees, from parents, from students. Um, but we really want to bring back the family and small town CCUSD feel to the district. We feel like that's been missing lately. Um, and so that's, that's the goal in terms of bringing that back. That one is, again, a qualita or sorry, quantitative, qualitative goal rather than quantitative. With that, are there any questions? Um, well, for the ACT, will the ninth graders have opportunities to do like mock tests? So the ninth graders take ACT Aspire, okay. not the AC, ACT is until 11th grade. All of our students throughout the year uh, through School City um, and the Horizon product, so freshmen will take two practice tests, and then they will take the ACT Aspire. Sophomores will take three practice tests throughout the year. Juniors will take two practice ACT tests, and then the ACT their junior year. And then seniors, if any of the seniors are still taking the ACTs, they can still do practices leading up until their test time. And then some subjects as well, since many times juniors and seniors are in the same math class or science class, um, those teachers will actually assign those practice tests so they can get another data point on those students. Okay. Um, I just have one other question about ACT. Well, do all states administer that they don't? Students in every state can take the ACT. Uh, there are a limited number of states, and I want to say it's about 18, um, but I can get that number for you. Uh, there are a limited number of states who actually have the ACT as their state test, as Arizona does. Uh, that was one of the goals um, that I had looked at presenting and considered, instead of just comparing us to the state of Arizona, compare us to all of the states that do that. Um, so again, my goal would be we outperform every state. In CCUSD, we outperform every state on the ACT. Um, but just for the states that actually administer to 85% or more of their population. For instance... Uh, I moved here from Connecticut. Connecticut, that is not their state test. The students that are taking that test in Connecticut are oftentimes going for specific schools at a different, at a higher rate. So a small population just taking that tend to outscore when you're testing every single person in the state. Um, so I would want to compare apples to apples in that. So I will be bringing that information back. I've talked with Dr. Jensen. We are going to do that comparison. That data just would not be back in time for June when my evaluation would be due. Okay. Um, I, I want to compliment you for how you've structured this. You know, you, you've kind of made this super easy for us. You've given us the rubric, one. But 
as a first year superintendent, I respect and appreciate the fact that you really are stretching and this is about um, seeing improvement. As you've stated, you know, we've never reached that percentage point, but it's a stretch and we can't grow unless we stretch. And so I appreciate the fact that you're willing to put this out here and, and give us a rubric in the way that you've done. So thank you. And it speaks highly to your, your commitment to the position and to the district. Anybody else have any comments? I, I just had a couple of questions uh, regarding a couple of the goals. Um, as far as the Ellis trained by everybody, what is the extent of the training? How intensive is it? Is it like multiple sessions? What, what, what is involved in getting everybody tested? Member Fortney, thank you for the question. Um, this will actually could potentially become a multi-year project is, is the vision of this. So this first year, we're really focusing on the teachers. Um, it does, it will take multiple sessions at sites for principals to get through this with their staff or directors to get through that. Um, but it, the first part is an online program. So it is online. It can be self-paced. They can go back and review it. Um, again, for... Sorry, for Navigate 360, which is the company that runs the training uh, for Alice, if we get 75% of our people actually gone through and, and complete the program, that's their point of where they will certify us in terms of being an Alice trained school and district. Uh, what that provides is if something should occur, they will actually come and back us up and support us in court. They will actually talk about what the training we've gone through. Um, and the effectiveness of that and gain support that way from them. To answer your question, it'll, probably, it'll be a couple of hours throughout the year on different times that teachers will have to go through. What's nice as well is there's a general training that everybody does, but then there are specific trainings that are a little bit longer and by a little bit longer, 15 to 20 minutes, but bus drivers have a piece because they have a unique scenario. Um, coaches have a unique piece because they have unique scenarios that are different than just being in the classroom. Um, so there are some specific trainings. Cafeteria is one of those specific trainings as well. Um, so different employee groups also have a little bit specialized training that goes along with it. It's really scenario based and making the best decision to keep you and your kids safe based on the information you have. It's not a one, one stop shop or a one size fits all. It really is. How do you evaluate a situation and then what do you do to make the best decision in order for you to be safe and, the, and your kids? And my only other question, you mentioned the survey and that we hadn't reached 90% on students feeding safety. Do you know what the, the high point is on that, on that question on surveys? Um, it was in between the 80 and 90, um, 6 through 12 was 83%. And the three through five was, I believe, 90%, but then averaging them together, it was, it was somewhere around 85%. Um, I will send that out to the board in the board update this Friday, though. I'll give you the... Thanks. That's all. Thank you. Any other questions? I do. On that same question about the, the student survey about safety, when, when will that be administered this next year? Member Elmore, we haven't decided yet when the survey will actually go out to students. Okay. Um, and then as far as taking the staff through the program, is it mandatory? Is it optional? How, how, does, how does that, how's that structured? No, this is, this is part of the fabric and the safety program for CCUSD. So this is something that we want everybody to do. Um, again, the 95%, I set it high, but I also wanted to have room for, if we have new staff that come on at some point, kind of working all of that through. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? All right, action consent. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, moving right along. All right. Thank you, President Busby, for pausing for me at that point in time. Uh, President Busby, members of the board, with your most recent action, 
You have approved Mrs. Shelley Richardson as the new principal of Lone Mountain. I would like to introduce her to you and our community and invite her to step to the microphone. Mrs. Richardson is an Arizona native and spent 15 years of her teaching career right here at Horseshoe Trails and Desert Willow Elementary in Cave Creek before leaving our district to gain experience for her administrative career. She has spent the last three years as an assistant principal in neighboring districts. She holds a bachelor's degree from Arizona State University and completed her master's degree in educational leadership at Northern Arizona University. Welcome back, Mrs. Richardson. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank all of you for this opportunity. It feels so good to be back. I mean, like Mr. Dolezal said, having started here and then ending my career, or not ending it, but starting to do Lone Mountain is really exciting. So I can't wait to start. And thank you again for all of this. And I can't wait to continue the success that you guys are already doing. So thank you. Welcome back, Mrs. Richardson. And um, I told Adam that you were going to be the principal. And he's like, that is so awesome. I don't want to know how old he is now. 21. He, she was Adam's third grade teacher. Um, yeah. um, item 7.1, approval of the 2023-24 interim superintendent goals. All right. Do we have a motion? So moved. A second. 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 All right. Any questions or comments? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. All right. Item 7.2, approval of interim superintendent's performance-based pay resolution presented by Mr. Dolezal. President Busby, members of the board, uh, administration would recommend that the governing board approve the superintendent's performance-based pay resolution for the 2023-2024 school year as presented so moved is there a second second okay any questions or comments um i just have a few questions just clarification um i see up to five percent the state is that ten percent or twenty percent i know in the past we had ten percent so the ars statute actually sorry member walker the, the ars statute actually allows for up to twenty percent Okay, that's all, just wanted that out there. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. All right, item 7.3, ASBA's proposed 2024 political priorities presented by me. Is there a motion? So moved. A second? Second. All right. Um, well, Member Fortney, since you were the uh, legislative liaison, why don't you give us a little info on what the board has been given for the political agenda? Sure. The, uh, the ASBA goes, gets their legislative, legislative committee together and they come up with uh, certain topics that they feel are the most important to their priorities for the upcoming legislative, uh, uh, legislative year, things that they'll be uh, working to get passed in our legislature. And that is what is presented here uh, back on May 8th. Uh, those were presented and to all the boards uh, that was when ours was, and all the school boards get to uh, give uh, additional comments if they feel that they're necessary, and those are all looked at, and the committee goes through and finalizes it, and that's what we have here, and that will be uh, what we uh, discuss on, I believe it's September 9th, uh, when we all get together and ratify these things. Okay. Um, a question for you. When... We approve this as a whole, or do we give you instructions per section? You can go either way. Okay. They, they, when, they, when they do the meeting, they kind of go through a lot of this in a lot of detail. Okay. Uh, so whatever, in, whatever you wanted to put in there, I can take with me. Okay. 
All right, so then let's start with section one. Does anybody have any comments or questions regarding what's in this political agenda in section one? Well, just that it'd be really nice if they nice. did it. <laughs> I, I do have, I, I know there, there's nice. not an answer to this, but a lot of these goals reference small, rural, and remote districts. How is Cave Creek defined? Because we're small, we're in a metropolitan area, but we have a lot of the characteristics of a small and rural school district. So do these apply to us? I don't think they do, but I'll, I'll, I'll check it, but I don't think so now. And, you know, assuming that the answer is, as you said, it doesn't apply to us. Is there any consideration for any other school districts like us that don't fit the typical mold. I mean, yeah. it's, you know. Well, you know. I think we would kind of be, there's certain uh, designated school sizes and we probably are in a certain size based on our, our student population. Uh, so I don't, I don't know, but I could check it. Yeah, I know that Cave Creek hasn't always been a super priority for ASBA. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and. I'm not expecting it to change anytime soon, but there's always hope. Um, okay. In section two, does anybody have questions or comments for section two? Anybody on section two? When, um, you know, we're gonna vote on this, so I, we're gonna vote on this as as it's presented unless we make some kind of modification. So, anybody have any questions? Okay, and then section three. Four. I have a question on section four. On number one, it references um, improperly received and or expended public funds by charter and private school organizations. What exactly is that? No, Maybe not. Mrs. Rodriguez could enlighten me. Sorry about that. Thank you, um, Madam President, members of the board. So as we know, there, um, ha there are empowerment scholarships that are um, being um, funded now for private schools. And so that would refer to the private schools. Okay. And there are often times where parents are given like a card with dollars on them and they spend for the educational services of their students. And it's been found that some of those funds are being improperly used. Okay. And so the organizations that receive those funds would have to return them is what I am um, understanding from here. And recovery from charter schools, there have been charter schools who have improperly reported attendance, um, received um, money for kids that did not attend their schools. So there are, this is just highlighting that there are some um, oversight um, regulations that need to be put in place to prevent those funds from being used improperly. I. I, I really appreciate this particular um, agenda item and we, um, those of us who are in the public school systems have been asking for accountability of our taxpayer dollars for these different organizations for a long time. So if the um, legislature, if ASBA um, advocates for this, I'm hoping that we can see some of this um, put into the next legislation session. Okay. Thank you for the mm -hmm. clarification. Um, that was item four. Uh, section five, well, five, six, and seven. Does anybody have any comments, questions? Okay, then we need to vote on this. So all in favor of um, Member Fortney supporting this political agenda as ASBA has provided to us, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. 
Okay. Um, all right. So there you have it. Um, all right. Then you'll report back to us in September how that went. You bet. Okay. Item 7.4, online charter school student participation in interscholastic athletics and activities, presented by Dr. Henriksen. President Busby, members of the board, administration uh, moves that the governing board continue the ongoing practice of limiting participation in interscholastic athletics and activities to CCUSD registers, registered students and homeschooled students registered through the Office of Maricopa County School Superintendent and whom reside within CCUSD boundaries for the 23-24 school year as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Is there any questions or comments? Yes. Our, our policy, JJIB, Interscholastic Sports, starts out, purpose of interscholastic athletics is both educational and recreational. School sports program should encourage participation by as many students as possible and should always be conducted with the best interests of the participants as the first consideration. That's our standing policy. You can look it up on on our policy bridge. All of this uh, bylaw, the AIA bylaw 15.3.1.2, all that they ask is that students may be allowed to try out for interscholastic athletics on activities on behalf of that member school. For a school district such as ours that over the last three years has hemorrhaged students leaving this district why would we stop any one student that maybe tries out for a team because that's all they have to be allowed to is to try out. Maybe they make the team. Maybe they have a, they're with their friends. Maybe they have a great experience. Maybe by the semester break, they enroll in one of our schools. I, we're not at the situation where we can just pick and choose kids. If there's a kid out there that wants to come play fill in the blank, soccer, lacrosse, basketball, whatever, they live in our district, then why are we preventing that to happen? This is, and we were told in a board update that the AIA associate executive director told the athletic directors of the member schools of the AIA, which is the Arizona Interscholastic Association, that there are zero districts allowing online charter school students that reside in their public school boundaries to participate. And that, that, to me, that's asinine. So why are we going to eliminate what might be an experience, a positive experience for a student? They still have to try out. They're not guaranteed a spot on the team. They still have to try out. Who are we to sit up here and say that a student who's maybe online for whatever reasons, and there's been a lot of different reasons since 2019 that we all know. Why, why are we preventing that to happen? We want to be inclusive. We want those kids to get involved. At the high school, students that are involved have great experiences. So I, I can't vote no against this. I think it's, you know, like I said, for, for the district that has been losing students hand over fist, if we can capture a couple, then that's a plus for us. And that's all I have to say. I have a couple questions. Okay. Um, what, what is the cost, rough cost, to have a student participate in this? Uh, Member Ulmer, um, dependent on the sport, it's going to vary from cost, not only the coaching staff, uniforms, things like that. Um, it is a pay-to-play uh, sport okay. in our in our district and so a lot of that is funded by the um, either tax credit dollars or the money raised by that um, I can get you specific numbers of what it would be a breakdown for sports from mr. Amon well that's okay yeah. I mean I don't if, if if it really is a pay per pay to play kind of thing then it's not costing the district per se I, I think above I mean there there are districts the cost that the district does incur it, it, that covers a, a portion of the fees but when it comes to all the other amenities that go along with sports there's costs that are not covered so um mr rodriguez could probably talk to you a little bit more as far as the budgetary impact 
but uh, collectively there is a cost to the district to house athletics. And what's, are, are there liabilities for us to allow students outside? Um, my, I can't speak to that specifically. Um, it would be my understanding that um, with any student athlete that they do have some li we do have liability coverage as as for our student athletes um, and then knowing that this would be a, something new for our district that's something that we would um, get with our district attorneys on to, to determine are we covered by someone who is not currently an enrolled students I kind of tend to agree somewhat with member Brown in terms of I know one of my personal goals is to try to bring back, win back a lot of the students that we've lost. And I, I do see that this is a potential to perhaps do that and maybe win some other students along the way. Um, so that, that's the reason for my, my questions. Not all sports are, require tryouts. There are some, yeah, that, President Busby, there are some sports that are not required tryouts where, um, for instance, I believe cross country, um, they allow all, all, all participants. Um, some of the other sports, because they're only allowed to field so many students, um, they do have cuts. Okay. So, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out where the right spot in this is. And I, I appreciate both your perspective and Member Brown. But then what about our students who are currently enrolled? They're, they're enrolled, they want to participate, so they try out, they make the team, and then a student who's online comes in and bumps them from a position on the team. And that's not fair to that student, and you know, does that, parent get upset and say well you're not fair so I'm going to take my student to a school that isn't going to do this I mean it's all I, the bylaw states is that may be allowed to try out for interscholastic athletics so we're not bumping kids off of oh, teams no, we're not, there'll be an tr open tryout anybody wants to come join the soccer team you come and do the tryout soccer coaches do put the kids through their paces and they, they keep the top 20 but if the team the sport doesn't have a tryout then, you know, like then nobody gets bumped. You can but, have as many kids on track well, and field and cross country. That's no big deal there. Okay. Well, let's take swimming for instance. It's not a hugely populated sport, and you know you've got one athlete, one swimmer who's, you know, the big fish in the in the pond at the moment, and then you bring in an online student who happens to be, you know. Uh, junior Olympian and has competed international now all of a sudden that student who was the number one swimmer for the freestyle is now not yeah. you know yeah. that student gets bumped out of their position is that fair to that student I don't know the answer but I'm trying in order to to make an effective vote I need to think about both sides of this and where where it's best for Cave Creek, you know, is what's going to make us best. I think that we have to do and remember that we do have online schools available here, and those kids are able to participate right now in this. Uh, so this is only for those that have withdrawn their kids from our schools and taken them to someplace else, which is part of the problem that we have been hemorrhaging like crazy. And then, so they're leaving our school, they're taking the money with them, so they're getting their education where they want, but then they're saying, well, come on, we want to come back, not to participate in your school, because it's not good enough, really, but we want to do the sports. So that's the problem I have with it, and it's kind of like having the best of both worlds, and our kids that are here, they don't have that option. Um, so I I'm, I'm understand what you're saying, um, but I think that we have to pay attention to the kids that are actually in our district and not hope that we can get a couple coming back. We have to pay attention to the ones that are here in our district and prioritize them. Does this only affect the AIA sports? We have a lot of club sports like mountain biking. I don't even know if... The swim team fall under AIA? I think the swim team is AIA. AIA. Yeah, this is specific. But, um, but this is 
Just yeah. for AIA, correct? Correct, Member Walker. Okay. So as part of our um, agreement to be a member of AIA, we uh, agree to abide by all of their bylaws right. with the exception of the flexibility of this one bylaw. So it does impact those, um, and not necessarily any clubs that are sponsored. Okay. Would this open the door for students to then say, okay, if I don't have to be a student on campus, then I'm going to leave and go somewhere else and be an online student, and then I'll just come back and participate. Would it open the door for that? President Busby, yes, a, a, a vote to a no vote on this um, would open the door for any online student to participate. So there is the potential for that. Um, you know, one of the things that we currently are experiencing is uh, where, where families are seeking uh, flex models with schools where they want to take certain courses at Cactus Shadows. They want to take other courses through other online platforms. Um, we do have it in our um, student handbook that they are required to take a minimum of six classes uh, junior or freshman through junior year. Um, so it does open that that um, those loopholes, if you will, or open the, the floodgates that, that there is a potential. Um, in the past, I do not believe that we've had many students that are online through not associated with the district seeking to, to participate in sports. Um, so so who knows what, it, what would actually happen. So if I understood you correctly, historically there haven't been a lot of requests from online students correct from my understanding there has not been okay okay well any other questions and president Bessie, just to clarify because just because of the wording of this so a yes vote would continue our practice we will not allow online students to participate a no vote um, would open um, and allow us to allow those online students to participate. Okay. So yes, keeps our practice as it has been. Okay. Is this voted on every year? Um, per the AIA bylaws, um, it is a vote that's every year. Some districts have uh, put it into their policy um, and, and talking with our attorneys um, that does meet the the letter of the the bylaw there that if it is a policy it's just a standing practice okay. all right you got it. all right okay all in favor of keeping the current practice say aye 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 those wanting to um, change the current practice, please vote no or nay. No. Okay. It, it stays the. I didn't. I didn't vote. Okay. Well, then let's do a roll <laughs> call vote. Member, uh, Vice President Brown. No. Member Walker. No. Member Fortney. Aye. I'm an aye. No. Okay. So. All right, then. Thank Let's you, President Busby. Um, our next steps I will get with uh, Dr. Pletnick and uh, Mr. Amen, because um, we'll make sure we have practices and procedures in place. Um, should we, as allowing online charter schools to participate. Um, I'll make sure that I get some information from our lawyers regarding liability and what, what that all entails. Um, and then obviously um, we do have a student code of conduct for our athletes and making sure that any online charter student that is not one of our students, what is the code of conduct that they must meet to continue to participate. So um, I'll bring that back in a board update for you at a later okay. time. So, Thank you. You're welcome. And then we can monitor it for this year and re okay. Yeah. That is correct. I do have a question about this. If after you speak with the attorney about the liability and we find out that our liability doesn't extend to non-enrolled students, then what do we do? Um, at President Busby, at that uh, time, you would um, either uh, bring it back for another vote um, or we may have to seek ways for that student to make sure that they have their own coverage. Um, that would um, exclude the district from any liability for that. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Item 8.1, upcoming calendar events, presented by Mr. Dolezal.
Madam President, members of the board, uh, just a few upcoming events to talk about. We have Sonoran Trails Middle School Curriculum Night on August 15th from 5 to 7. And then we have Cactus Shadows Curriculum Night, August 21st from 6 to 8. And then Labor Day, September 4th. That's it? That's it. Okie dokie. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody want to stay? <laughs> okay. We are adjourned.